you've seen him on TV, heard his name, seen his social media posts, maybe even bought his books. What if I told you that America's most popular psychiatrist, Dr. Daniel Amen, might be selling you snake oil? That's right, he's full of BS. Dr. Amen claims his spec scans can diagnose mental health issues. He says these scans are a game changer in psychiatry. He claims that using these scans, he can diagnose PTSD, ADHD, and more. But is this really true? Many experts, including myself, don't think so. So why does Dr. Amen push these scans? And what about his costly supplements? Are they really helping people? Or is this all just a way to make more money? And who am I to expose this grifter? My name is Dr. Salman Aziz Mirza, triple board certified in adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and education medicine. And with his Washington DC clinic about 15 minutes away from me, and having seen patient reports from there, oh boy, I have so much to say. <laughs> To understand Dr. Amen's methods, we need to look at spec scans, the brain scans he uses a lot. But what are they? And do they work the way he says? SPECT stands for Single Photon Emission Computerized Tomography. It's a type of scan that shows blood flow to parts of the body. To do a SPECT scan, doctors inject a small amount of gamma-emitting radioisotope into the patient. Then they use a gamma camera to take pictures of the target organ. I know what you're thinking, gamma rays like Bruce Banner and the Incredible Hulk. Exactly. Dr. Amen claims these scans can diagnose many mental health issues. He says they can spot problems like ADD, anxiety, and depression. He even says the scans give tangible evidence of these issues. This idea sounds good. Who would want clear proof of what's wrong? But here's the thing. Most experts don't agree with Dr. Amen. They say SPEC scans can't diagnose mental health issues accurately. In fact, the American Psychiatric Association did a study in 2018. They found that no brain scans are useful for diagnosing mental health problems. Many doctors have spoken out against Dr. Amen's use of spec scans, including myself. Check out an expose article I was quoted in by the Daily Beast in the show notes and description, where I said there was no medical utility for spec scans in psychiatry. Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman, who used to lead the American Psychiatric Association, was even harsher than my statement. He called Amen's work the modern equivalent of pseudo-color phrenology and said his claims were outrageous. He means it's like an old discredited way of studying the brain, just with pretty colors. SPECT technology is also over 30 years old. Newer methods like PET scans and MRIs often work better and are safer. Other experts have similar views. Martha Farah, a neuroscience professor, and S.J. Gillahan, a psychologist, looked into this. They said there's a lack of empirical validation for using SPECT scans to diagnose mental health issues. In simple terms, there's no good proof that it works. But the problems don't stop there. SPEC scans use radiation. This means there are health risks. Dr. Harriet Hall, a retired family doctor, pointed this out. She said Amen charges patients thousands of dollars to inject them with radioactive compounds. She's added that there's no credible evidence that it adds to the diagnostic or treatment processes. The radiation risk is especially worrying for children. Martha Farrow noted that tens of thousands of individuals, many of them children, have been exposed to the radiation of two SPEC scans. This exposure happens without any clear benefit. There's also the cost to think about. A first visit with spec scans at Amos Clinics costs about $4,000. Most insurance plans don't cover this, so patients pay a lot of money out of pocket for tests that might not help them. So, while Dr. Amon claims spec scans are a breakthrough, the facts tell a different story. While there is an established rule and purpose of spec scans of the brain, mostly in differentiating between Alzheimer's dementia or vascular dementia as a result of strokes, there are none for psychiatric conditions. This leaves us with a big question. If spec scans aren't the answer, what is Dr. Amen really selling? Now that we've looked at Dr. Amen's use of spec scans, let's explore another controversial aspect of his work, his theory about ADHD. Dr. Amen claims that there are seven types of ADHD, or ADD as he omits the H, each with its own symptoms and treatments. This idea sounds intriguing, but is it based on solid science? Dr. Amen's seven types of ADHD include classic ADD, inattentive ADD, overfocused ADD, temporal lobe ADD, limbic ADD, ring of fire ADD, and anxious ADD. He says each type has specific symptoms and causes. For example, he claims classic ADD involves inattentiveness and hyperactivity due to dopamine deficiency. He recommends stimulant medications or supplements like rhodiola and green tea for treatment. Another type he describes is overfocused ADD. 
Dr. Amon says people with this type have trouble shifting attention and get stuck in negative thought. He attributes this to low dopamine and serotonin levels. His suggested treatments include supplements like L-tryptophan and antidepressants. These ideas might sound logical, but there's a big problem. The scientific community doesn't support them. Major psychiatric organizations recognize only three types of ADD, inattentive, hyperactive, and combined. Dr. Amon's seven types aren't backed by reliable research. Many experts have criticized Dr. Amon's approach. Perhaps the most damning criticism comes from Daniel Carlat, a professor of psychiatry at Tufts University. He called Dr. Amon's interpretations of spec scans for ADHD spectacularly meaningless. This suggests that Dr. Amon's ADHD types don't provide useful information for diagnosis or treatment. The American Psychiatric Association has also weighed in on this issue. They concluded that brain imaging, which Dr. Amon uses to support his ADHD types, isn't useful for diagnosing psychiatric disorders in children and adolescents. This directly challenges Dr. Amon's approaches. Why does this matter? Because misdiagnosing ADHD can lead to unnecessary treatments. Dr. Amon recommends different medications and supplements for each of his different ADHD types. If these types aren't real, patients might take medications or supplements they don't need. This could potentially harm their health and waste their money. And if there's one thing I teach all my trainees, it is that bad psychiatry is worse than no psychiatry. Critics argue that Dr. Amon's approach takes advantage of vulnerable people. Patients desperate for answers about their mental health might be drawn to his multicolored brain pictures and being able to point and say, here's the problem. But if these scans aren't scientifically valid, Dr. Amon is offering false hope through unproven and expensive treatments. In the end, the scientific consensus is clear. There's no reliable evidence supporting Dr. Amon's seven types of ADHD. His approach goes against established medical understanding and could lead to improper treatment and wasted money, which leads us to perhaps my biggest gripe with this grifter. We've seen how Dr. Amon uses spec scans, but that's not the only thing he's selling. Let's look at another big part of his business, supplements. Dr. Eamon has his own line of supplements called Brain MD. These are pills and powders that he says can help your brain. Brain MD offers many different supplements. They have things like fish oil and herbs. Dr. Eamon claims these can boost your brain health, but do they really work? And should a doctor be selling his own products? Many experts say there's no good proof that these supplements do what Dr. Eamon claims. Professor Irving Kirsch says selling unproven treatments is like being a snake oil salesman. That's a harsh comparison. Dr. Robert Burton, a brain expert, said he was just appalled by what Dr. Amon sells on his websites. And just as a note, when a doctor is running Black Friday and Cyber Monday specials on their websites, they're selling you a product, not a treatment. Selling supplements is a big part of how Dr. Amon makes money. He also writes books and appears on TV shows promoting these products. I've been outspoken and thinks it's wrong for Dr. Amon to sell his own products. While it is a fantastic business, is ethically terrible and creates a massive financial conflict of interest. And the worst part? Like I've said, I've read multiple treatment plans from Amen Clinics. They all include his line of supplements and his books or DVDs to purchase. Dr. Amen's business has been called an empire. Critics say it's built on dubious brain imaging technology and nutritional supplements. This means they think his whole business is based on things that do not work. This is a big problem when we're talking about people's health and money. We've seen how Dr. Amon promotes brain scans and supplements, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. His business empire goes far beyond these products. Let's take a closer look at how Dr. Amon has built his brand and spreads his message. Dr. Amon's reach is impressive. He's created a network of 10 brain scanning clinics across the United States. But that's not all. He also runs a supplement company called BrainMD and an online university, quote unquote, that offers certification and Amon techniques. Add to that his best-selling books, PBS specials, podcasts, and strong social media presence, and you've got a massive operation. You might wonder how Dr. Amon gained such a huge following. A big part of his success comes from his media presence. He's appeared on popular TV shows like The View and CBS This Morning. These appearances help him reach millions of viewers and build trust with the public. Celebrity endorsements have also played a key role in boosting Dr. Amon's profile. Big names like Khloe Kardashian, Justin Bieber, and Meghan Trainor have praised his methods. When famous people vouch for Dr. Amon, it makes his ideas seem more credible to many people. But perhaps the most surprising aspect of Dr. Amon's media presence is his relationship with PBS. 
the Public Broadcasting Network has aired thousands of hours of Eamon produced TV spots about brain health. However, this PBS connection has drawn criticism. Some experts argue that these programs are more like infomercials for Dr. Amos clinics and products than educational content. Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman from Columbia University expressed concern about this. He said the PBS airing of Amon's program provides a stamp of scientific validity to the work, which has no scientific validity. The problem goes beyond just Dr. Amon. His success points to bigger issues with medical misinformation. When unproven ideas get a platform on respected media outlets, it can mislead people about what treatments really work. This is especially concerning when it comes to mental health, where people are often desperate for answers. The impact of Dr. Amon's empire isn't just about misinformation. It also affects people's wallets. Many patients pay large sums out of pocket for his treatments, which aren't covered by insurance. And why are they not covered by insurance? Can't believe I'm agreeing with the insurance companies, but insurance companies are supposed to be following evidence-based medicine and treatment, which Dr. Amon is not providing. Dr. Amon's empire of misinformation shows how powerful media presence and celebrity endorsements can be. Even when experts disagree with his methods, his message reaches millions through TV, book, and social media. This raises important questions about how we share medical information and who we trust for health advice. We've explored Dr. Amon's empire, but what's the real impact on patients? It's in providing false hope. When people trust unproven treatments, they risk more than just money. Vulnerable patients might delay getting proper care. This can make their problems worse. Dr. Amon's methods haven't been scientifically proven to work, yet many desperate people turn to him for help. Evidence-based treatments are crucial in mental health. These are methods that have been tested and shown to work, but flashy marketing can sometimes overshadow solid science. As viewers, we need to be careful about health information. It's important to question bold claims and look for scientific proof. Always consult with licensed professionals who use proven methods. Your mental health is too important to gamble on unproven treatments. Thank you for watching and if you learned something new, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to share with family and friends to save them from falling to the Amen Clinic grift. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you've had any experience with Dr. Daniel Amen or his clinics. Was it helpful or did you just leave a few thousand dollars poor? Until next time, be safe and be well.